This video is a response to a question left in the comment area on this video. The question was, what size beam should they use for their temporary support? And here we can see we have a beam that is temporary, su temporarily supporting this section of the floor. We have a wall on the other side supporting, temporarily supporting these joists so that the beam can be removed that is creating the problem or damaged. Now, what the, I think the easiest way to see what type of beam you would, you would be using or what, what would be something that would be structurally acceptable for this type of repair would be to simply look at the other beams. And if these beams are not damaged and they are supporting the floor, so in other words, they're straight, they're not bowed, they're not cracked, they're not showing any signs of fatigue from additional stress, then you could probably use the same um, sized board. So for example, if we had a 10 foot four by eight here, that's in pretty good shape, been there for quite some time, you can probably use the same board for, the, for your support board. But uh, you could always go one size bigger. This is what I did here, and this is actually what I would do if I was making this type of repair. If I have a four by eight here, I'm gonna get a four by 10 because I don't want this floor caving in on me. Uh, that'd be the last thing I'd want to have happen. So always go one size bigger if you can. Um, but uh, if these beams are in good shape, they just might work um, work quite well. So, and, and, and keep in mind too that I have these uh, temporary supports underneath the beam and their blocks. You could always install additional temporary supports. So instead of just having them at the end, I could place one in the middle. And this is going to um, take a lot of pressure off of the beam here, off of the temporary beam. So if you're worried about something like that and you're not going to create a problem, an access problem for making the repair, uh, again, it's not uncommon to have somebody build a wall as we did on the other side and uh, put a beam like this on the one side and then figure out, I can't get to the beam to make the repair. That's not going to work. So... Uh, but if you put a few more blocks underneath the beam, that's going to provide you with um, some additional structural support uh, for the beam also. Again, if you're worried and, you're, and you don't know much about these types of repairs, this might be a, a, good, uh, um, a good tip for you here. So instead of having them supported at the ends, you could have them supported at the ends and maybe one in the middle, something like that. So... Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, these repairs can, can uh, they're not going to be easy and um, might actually require a professional if you don't feel comfortable or don't think you have enough information um, for it. Obviously, you can go get more information. Um, that's what uh, I can provide you with a lot of information about these, and you can always get more information at our websites. But uh, I've said this enough. And I, I can't stress it again. I know if you've watched a lot of these videos on repairs like these, you're probably tired of hearing it. But I can't stress this point enough. Last thing I want to have you do is go underneath your house, start working on a repair like this, and you don't come out. It's not going to be a good thing. So just think twice about uh, doing a repair like this. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, make sure you get a professional in there. For this, this isn't the same as changing out a window or building a deck, you know, this is a major um, structural repair.